Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about the tympanic membrane, also called eardrum. It lies at the end of the external ear, which I made a video about, which you maybe haven't seen yet, then you can click up here in the banner and watch that first and then come back to this video. So the tympanic membrane lies, as I said, at the end of the external ear and at the beginning of the middle ear. So it builds kind of a transition. So the tympanic membrane is a connective tissue structure, which is covered on the outside with skin and on the inside with mucous membrane. The annulus tympanicus is connecting it to the temporal bone and it is a fibrocartilaginous ring. It receives the sound waves from the external acoustic meatus and then swings because it's made of um, fibrous tissue mainly and then it gives further the vibrations by the swinging to the ossicles in the middle ear. About the middle ear we will also talk later on. But let's now first talk about the orientation of the tympanic membrane. As you can see here on the poster I drew both of them for the left ear and for the right ear and on the respective outer uh, sides you can see the anterior or for the left ear the left portion or for the right ear the right portion. Let's first talk about the left ear. You can orient yourself on the manubrium of the maleus and the umbo which are pointing slightly to the left side or to the anterior side so that's how you know that you're looking at the left ear. The manubrium... no. Yeah, so the manubrium of the maleus points slightly to the left in the left ear and slightly to the right in the right ear. The umbo is a convex center which is elevated by the handle of the maleus, which is the first of the three ossicles in the middle ear. It's the maleus, the incus and then the stapes. They are interconnected with each other and the maleus is the first one which receives the vibration by the swinging of the tympanic membrane. At the end of the manubrium is the umbo and the manubrium of the maleus is a fibrous band. It's also elevated by the maleus and in some literature it's also called stria malearis. Then superiorly to the manubrium, which is the most prominent structure which you will also see when you look into the air and see the tympanic membrane, it's the pars flaccida. And this is a loose or relaxed um, part of the tympanic membrane. It's in the superior aspect and it's located between the malleolar folds. I drew them in the right ear only, but you can see a posterior and an anterior malleolar fold and they're building the inferior border of the pars flaccida. Then you can also see the long processes of the incus each in the left ear and in the right ear. And you can also see that the whole structure is surrounded by a ring. That's the annulus tympanicus. And this is a fibrous ring which connects the tympanic membrane to the bone surrounding it. Within the big white part which I drew here in the tympanic membrane, there are also different structures we, which we can recognize. There's first of all the pars tensa, which is a tended or um, yeah, more tense area, as the name already says. And then you can see in the more inferior aspect, the cone of light. That's the area where light is reflected on the posterior inferior aspect of the tympanic membrane. Then there's the shadow of the round window. The round window is a structure within the ear and you can just see it usually within the tympanic membrane. These are the most important structures. For exams it's advisable to be able to draw them and um, yeah, when the tympanic membrane is inflamed you can see that it's reddish or also it's possible that there's uh, edema behind it when it's fluid filled. The middle ear which is usually air filled. As I said it's um, swinging or vibrating to transform the acoustic waves which are entering the ear into vibration signals. So now I'm coming to the middle ear or the auris media 
It lies between the tympanic membrane and the lateral wall of the inner ear. It is surrounded by the temporal bone and it transmits vibrations from the tympanic membrane further via the three ossicles or three bones, the malleus, the incus and the stapes, and the tympanic cavity is filled with air. The tympanic membrane we already talked about, so I'm not going to mention it again. And there are different parts to the middle ear. First, the tympanic cavity containing the three ossicles and air, and the epitympanic recess, which is a space superior to the tympanic cavity adjacent to mastoid air cells. Those air cells are filled air spaces, as the name says, within the temporal bone, and they function to regulate the air pressure and protect the temporal bone from injury. They are also able to release the air into the tympanic cavity when the pressure within the tympan uh, tympanic cavity drops and becomes too low to the bones. So they are lying between the tympanic membrane and the oval window of the inner ear and they are kind of connecting the outer portion of the ear or the middle ear to the inner ear and, and the sound entering, entering the external acoustic meatus moves the tympanic membrane where the malleus takes up the swinging as vibration and then passes, passes it on first to the incus then to the stapes which then will um, further propagate these vibrations to generate, generate sound signals but that's the function of the inner ear. We also find muscles within the middle ear, two muscles to be precise, the musculus tensor tympani and the musculus stapedius, latter of which is the smallest muscle which, which we can find in the human body. These muscles contract when there's very loud noise to cushion the vibrations of these ossicles and so reduce the sound transmission protecting the ear. This contraction and reduction of the vibration of the ossicles is also co called acoustic reflex. The musculus tensor tympani connects to the handle of the malleus and pulls it medially with, a, uh, with contraction. It's innervated by the mandibular nerve, by the nervus tensorus tympani branch. The musculus stapedius connects to the stapes ossicle and it's innervated by the seventh cranial ner nerve, the so nervus facialis. We also find the Eustachian tube in the inferior aspect of the middle ear, and it connects the middle ear to the nasopharynx. So to simplify it, it's a connection between the ear and the nose. It is made up of cartilage and bone, and its function is to equalize the pressure of the middle ear to the external ear canal. And it runs in anterior and medial inferior direction. That's it to the middle ear and the tympanic membrane. I hope it was helpful. Next time we're going to talk about the uh, uh, inner ear, uh, auris interna. There it's going to be a little bit more complex. I hope you're going to see that video also once I made it and I would be very happy if you could subscribe if you liked the video.